just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting your... Is that a shark alarm? I was trying to start it and I knew people were drowning and it wouldn't start. It's mid-afternoon and two lifeguards, Jake and Chris, are patrolling the beach. Jesse is alone in the tower. The golden rule is never, ever, ever leave the tower unattended. We always need someone watching the water. Jesse spots a group of swimmers getting into trouble at the north end. The guy that's stuck out the back can actually swim. It's just this rip. He's uh, really, really strong. Yeah, boys, uh, he's going to have to go straight in. Chris and Jake have to rescue a girl and two guys. The thing that scared me the most was that it was such a short period swell, which means that the waves are constantly breaking after each other. So you don't really have time if you roll to get ready again, because the next wave's already going to hit you. Jake reaches the girl, but is pushed back. Chris makes it through to the other two swimmers, the teenager and an older man. Jake has the girl, but fights the waves. This is going to be the hardest thing now, getting them back in, because the rip's so strong, it's going to suck them out the back. Even if you're the best lifeguard in the world, if a three-foot wave hits you for patient on, you're falling off. As much as I want to help Jake and Chris, I just can't leave the tower unattended. If I do that, there's another 800 metres of the beach that's going to be unpatrolled. Chris gets his two patients to safety, but learns of a fourth swimmer in trouble. And then I seen Chris grab another guy. Then Jesse spots yet another person in trouble, a fifth swimmer further up the beach. Both available lifeguards can't be contacted in the water. What do I do, you know? I can't leave the tower. This guy out here, I just don't want to take my eyes off this guy out the back. Hey, hey. Jesse has to find a solution to his dilemma, or this man could drown. And then, out of nowhere, I just thought, you know, hoppers across the road. Head lifeguard Hoppo is in his office just behind the tower in the Bondi Pavilion. Hey, uh, Hop, are you across the road, mate? I might uh, need someone just to come to the tower. I might need to go down and help the boys here. Hey, mate. I'll uh, pop it. Jesse has to cover 400 metres in the buggy. I was trying to start it, and I knew people were drowning, and it wouldn't start. And then all of a sudden, it just started, and I just pinned it, not even noticing how fast I got. Another one falling off the bank that Jesse's got gone in for. Moments before Jesse reaches the patient, a pair of experienced body surfers hold the swimmer up. These things happen. You get two or three go at the same time makes it a bit more difficult. All five swimmers are accounted for. <laughs> Thank you. Ben Buckler, Ben Buckler, head to Ben Buckler. I'm getting an updated report. Someone's drowned off Ben Buckler. As I turned around, I had police officers, police rescue, ambulance officers, everyone just running after me. Boys, I just got the phone call just now. It's um, just the other side of the baby's pool near the rock pool. There's someone there, they're applying pressure. This is a fair bit of blood, ambulance called, they're on their way over. I told you something was gonna happen. When you're in the buggy going to an incident, to tell you the truth, you're always thinking of the worst. Hi, boys. A few people around here. Got there, and there was actually a guy on the ground. He had a fairly bad head cut. The head cut is not life-threatening, but without warning, emergency services come from all directions. Someone is with sirens going through the car park. Two cars. Copy, there's two cop cars flying up that way. Lifeguards aren't sure if the response is for the head cut or that something else is going on. We're responding to a head wound on the North Corner Rocks. So I think it's a different incident. What are you talking about? So you're saying that there's a scuba diver that's drowned? OK. 
I just was like, excuse me? Can you, I needed him to say it again to me. I was like, okay, so you're saying that he's, he's drowned, he's fully submerged, he's, he's dead? That's accurate. Okay, all right, well, we'll, we'll launch our jet ski. So Bondo Central, just letting you know that we've had a report of a scuba diver at North Bondi drowning. Boy, we need the jet ski. Yeah, copy, I'm in there to Can Am. Can you get a uh, vest and that suit it up for me? I'm gonna pull the ski out. Martha, suit it up, I'm gonna put him in the water now, Ben. One of you guys dealing with that first aid. Do you just wanna head out towards the rocks there? You're almost out there, just bog across and see what you can see. Go, go, go. I said, go. Harrison, stay here with the patient, I'll go. So I've just started bolting for North Bondi. Jesse races to the last known location of the diver. As I turned around, I had police officers, police rescue, ambulance officers, everyone just running after me. And it was kind of like, all right, I'm here. If I see this guy, I'm jumping in the water to get him. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm up here. I can't see anyone, mate. Copy, mate. Yeah, I don't know. Ben Buckler, Ben Buckler, head to Ben Buckler. I'm getting an updated report. Someone's drowned off Ben Buckler. The information lifeguards are receiving is unverified. It was bizarre. It was like, riddle me this. It's a drowned scuba diver off the headland of North Bondi. And it just, it didn't, it was very confusing. It didn't really make sense. In addition to the jet ski, paramedics and police, Lifesaver One joins the search. Yeah, radio track, jet ski, uh, central, this is jet ski. Any further information we hear? The most recent information I have is a scuba diver drowned North Bondi. What a time for this to happen. You know, the water's pretty clear here. Sometimes you can get a small visual, but if they're diving at any sort of depth, there's really no way to see if it's a drowned scuba diver. Information is patchy. But lifeguards prepare for the worst. Hard to see you down at North Bondi. We've got a DC if you do grab someone. Jess was out on the rocks and he was trying to get a visual on, you know, anything. He's like, there's nothing. I can't see anything. Finally, a breakthrough. We started walking back around and there was a police officer next to me. And then I heard it go over his radio saying, it's the wrong information. It's the guy that's on the rock with the head cut. Did you hear that? Stand down. It was just the guy that cut his head. We'll come back around the rocks. I'm just with him now. Frustration quickly gives way to relief. Way down, Reedy can't get to the second woman. This man doesn't appear in trouble. He can tread water. And he hasn't looked back at the beach once. But after years of experience, Chapo has a feeling that trouble is looming. This will be a good, this will be a good rescue. As Chapo paddles out, a powerful rip sweeps the man into the impact zone. 150 metres, easy. How long will it be a minute, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got you. You all right? You all right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You've got an absolute shellacking in the impact zone. Let's keep walking in, buddy. That's easy. Oh, that's how we do, buddy. The man's girlfriend is suddenly aware she almost lost her partner. Lucky to have been spotted, 26-year-old student Leo appears stable, but he's showing signs of nausea. Lifeguards will need to watch him closely. For now, there's a bigger problem. Deity spots another swimmer caught in the same rip. The nearest patrolling lifeguard is 400 metres away. The woman is quickly running out of energy. Reedy races from his post at the tower and commandeers a surfboard. As he approaches her, he spots another woman in worse trouble further out to sea. Weighed down, Reedy can't get to the second woman. finally backs up and puts the nine-foot rescue board into top gear. Oh, 
fun. They've just slipped off that bank and straight out and, yeah, just lucky. They went really quickly. Both are safe and sound. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for Leo, the man lifeguards rescued from the same rip minutes earlier. Is he OK? He doesn't look OK. No, I'm feeling dizzy. Dizzy? Yeah. Dizzy. Oh, We're gonna put him righty. We won't give you a bit of oxygen. Uh -huh. We might get you out of the sun as well. Do you want to come with us, get him out of the sun? Yeah. yeah. First day, Ben. Do you need to vomit? Yeah. If there's water in his lungs, Leo is susceptible to a lethal condition called yeah. secondary drowning. We might um, get an ambulance. Get a bike to, chat, uh, to Luke, get an ambo for him. He's feeling sick. He's, uh, he's had a few cups of salt water, plus a swim in the rip. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is, some more. <laughs> you okay? This is a hospital case. Yeah. He's definitely had sushi. Just pulled a guy out of the water and he's just um, swallowed a bit of salt water and uh, he's just vomiting, he's just Coming feeling in. a bit of right to the left. Bad chicken or drowning experience when it was there. Chicken on the way. Are you honest? Doctors will x-ray Leo's chest to determine if he has water in his lungs. He wasn't looking good. That's cool, you were. Everything's just hit the roof. It's just panic stakes everywhere. The woman's had a baby abducted, mate. Abducted? Abducted. She's absolutely beside herself. It's a little baby, probably a toddler. Yeah, Laurie's an ex-lifeguard of 20 years, and he come running into the tower really concerned that a lady just reported to him that her baby had been abducted by another lady. I made an announcement down here. Yeah. A group of guys suddenly chirped up and said they're headed down towards the water's edge. This white woman and the baby. Apparently she was seen heading in the, in the direction of... She, she doesn't know the lady. She really. doesn't know the lady. Wow. Should, should we get it? Ring the police, definitely. There's such a big crowd and to try and find someone amongst that crowd who had abducted a baby was just going to be so hard to deal with. Hey, um, it's Aaron Graham here from the Bondi Lifeguards. Hi, we've just had a lady down here who has had her baby abducted from the beach by another lady. Yeah, we get missing children all the time, but never had an abducted child before. On a central to Terry. We've had a lady who has had her kidnapped from in front of the tower by a big white lady and ran off with her baby. I notified all the boys on the beach by the radio, but they're about to find out about their own emergency. Everything's just hit the roof. It's just panic stakes everywhere. They were calling it, and so Tom was saying that they were holding it, uh, and that they wanted to close the big beach because they saw uh, the shark just in the clubbies here at Bondi Flags are saying that the southern outpost have seen a shark. I can't believe we've got a shark. I mean, they've got the duck and the um, yellow boat out there, so I'm trying to confirm it. Oh, this couldn't come at a worse time. Look how many people are on the beach. We're trying to find a baby, and now we've got a shark in the mix. In the back of my mind, I know that I might have to set this shark alarm off, which is going to set this massive crowd into a frenzy, making the search even harder. Oh, hang on, Loz. Loz. That's to Aaron Graham. Is that she got the baby? See so that can... Hang on, I might be able to save you the trip here. She, she's got the baby. She's got the baby back. I'm so relieved the baby's been found. Good I'm really intrigued to find out what happened, but at the moment I've got to deal with this shark. Old-fashioned beach day. Yeah. Sharks have been in the media lately. A surfer has lost a finger and knuckle fighting off a bull shark near Port Macquarie. Everybody thinks they see sharks. We only probably get three or four uh, sightings a year. The rest are, are false alarms. Bondi Central to Hopper. Go ahead. Apparently, though, the the yellow boat has seen a shark at Ben Butler heading south about 10, oh, about 20 minutes ago. And
And then the outpost at South Bondi, I reckon they seen it from the beach about five minutes ago. The clubbies down at South Bondi have said they've seen the shark. Obviously, if we set the alarm off every time someone thought they seen a shark, it's going to be like the boy that cried wolf. I just don't understand how did the people from South Bondi see it and they haven't told you guys. Generally, it's my decision uh, whether we put the alarm on and clear the water. But the first domino had been knocked over, so we couldn't turn it back from there. Do a surf. Yeah, Taco is going to hit the switch right now. One flick of a button and everyone just goes crazy. It's a pretty big deal for a young 18-year-old trainee to set the shark alarm off at 30,000 people down at the beach. <laughs> Look at the flies, mate. He just had the biggest grin on his face. It was as wide as Luna Park. Mate, it's like they're in a ball paddling race. Coming in? This is one in a lifetime. It's about a football stadium of people just scattered on the beach, going berserk. This scene to the south of me, I've never seen anything like it. That's the most people I've ever seen on Bondi, in or out of the water. They're all out, and uh, you can just see it's literally thousands and thousands of people. Taco feels so tough when you get that alarm and it's made 30,000 people just obey his demands. This is unbelievable. Every single person at the beach would have been worried about this shark. You could tell they're all standing up, but the poor lady looking for a baby, that was the last thing on her mind. There's only a certain amount of time that you're gonna keep this massive crowd out of the water on such a hot day. So it's up to the lifeguards to make a quick call and a safe call. Bondi Central to Hot, mate. Just an update. They've got the helicopter on the way to uh, have an aerial search. sweep and uh, I imagine they're going to fly off right about now. Lifesaver 1, the helicopter above us has done a thorough search of the bay. They're reporting excellent visibility, good clarity in the water. They're confident that there's nothing out there. They've given us the all clear to reopen the beach. Taco, can you give the all clear now the shark's gone? <laughs> we gave Taco the honour of of um, sounding the shark alarm to give the all clear. So we well, just on and off twice. One shark case closed, one baby investigation still going. The baby was walking off and you just... Yeah, she just, yeah, she's just walking uh, after her father and I just saw her and I didn't want to let, oh, right. let her alone in the water. We've got one lady claiming that she's found a baby and then we've got another lady claiming that she's had a baby stolen. We're just sitting here and my husband's gone swimming with her, the, older, the older daughter and this young, the young girl was playing with uh, the baby here. I looked around and I didn't see my one. I just thought, oh my God, what's going on? The baby was following the father and sister down towards the water's edge. And I didn't know what to do because she was just away. 
And the backpacker girl thought the baby was lost and thought she was doing a good deed. <laughs> and then I just went after her and I said to her, we have to go back, we have to go back. And I didn't want to grab her, like, we just don't know her. The mother's gone walking down the water's edge to be informed by a member of the public that a lady had picked the baby up and wandered off into the crowd. I just can't describe how I felt. A lot of things go through your mind in such circumstances. I don't really want to think about it. Go, 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 go. A swimmer goes to the man's aid, only for the tables to quickly turn. Oh, he's dragging another person under. Nice going out there. We've actually closed this part of the beach. Lifeguards are rostered on until 7 p.m. These red and yellow flags have come down. Conditions are too dangerous. But in summer, the sun sets closer to 8.30 and swimmers take to the water at their own risk. And we're packing up, we're going home. The hardest thing for us at the end of the day is actually turning your back on the water. We know that when we pack up the beach and we've locked all the equipment away that there are still people swimming. Just as lifeguards are about to close the last door, a report comes in. Central to one of the lifeguards, just got a report of a male who went for a swim an hour ago. Still got his stuff on the beach. Um, where were you sitting? Here. Just here? The man was last seen entering the water. Last location? Uh, middle set of stairs. So we went and had a look through his clothing with her permission and all of his stuff was still here. His money, his phone, his wallet, his keys. So clearly he hadn't left the beach. That's when it became a worry to us that he's still in the water. Is he a good swimmer? Do you know him really well? No, since three days. Three days, OK. So you don't know how well he swims? No, so... OK, all right. And this search started to get a little bit more serious. We're going to get Yatesy to take a sweep along the beach. If someone comes up to you at that time, you can't leave until you've found them. So what I wanted to do was get in the rhino and find this guy. What's his name? Mamad. 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 From Turkey. Mamad. Mamad. Guys, we got a lost man. His name's Mamad. Looking for a man named Mamad. If you're a Mamad, mate, please come to Lifestyle Tower. As the search is underway on the shoreline, Singlets and Maxi scan the water praying they haven't missed someone. Maxie and I were sort of looking out the back of the flags and something just wasn't right. <laughs> Maxie and I looked at each other and we were like, is he going under? Yeah, go, go. Right at the back of the old flags, milk set. Is that someone out the back way? There's a guy going under out the back of the flag. Go, 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 go. A swimmer goes to the man's aid only for the tables to quickly turn. Oh, he's dragging another person under. Lifeguards are still a long way off. Guys, I've got a board on my car. In moments, there could be two drowned swimmers. I got a call from the tower that there's two guys going under where the flags were, which was right in front of me. And I just pinned it. We just scrambled to grab whatever we can. We grabbed a few boards. Me and Singlet's both ran down. I got it. I couldn't see a person. All I heard was going under and drowning. Yeah, I put my head down and just got out there as quick as I could. Have you got eyes on that? How bad is it? We've got him on the binoculars. The bloke needs help. Yatesy is backed up quickly by Maxi. I just wanted to go as fast as I can, and at one stage it felt like it was forever to get to the guy. Oh, man. Oh, man. It was like a pulley system. They are both going up and down, up and down. And in that case, it's a perfect example. Sometimes the rescuers do get in trouble as well. Chapo keeps track of the location. OK, boys. If the men go under, lifeguards will use the megaphone to direct Yatesy and Maxi to the last known location. Boys are almost there. We haven't lost sight of him at all. Yatesy's got him. Yeah, yeah. When I got there, they were pretty much holding each other up. I looked over and um, Maxie was coming out, which was good to see. The rescuer was swimming with his girlfriend when he saw the drowning victim in trouble. He has, without doubt, saved a life. The guy that swam over to him, you know, is a hero because he kind of gave us a bit of time to get there so he didn't sink. Not looking for accolades, the mystery man swims back to shore. You know, he put his own life in danger to help this guy, and that's probably one of the most selfless things he could do as a human being. AJ is visiting Bondi for the first time. 
Mammoth, the missing man, is still nowhere to be seen. That guy was pretty lucky. If there was no one else around him, he would have been on the bottom. Lucky that we were still here waiting looking hey, for that other guy. Mate, he's a legend. Um... We weren't still here. That guy would have been dead. Yeah. yeah. We're packed up. We've got nothing on the beach. That was fluke. But I had that buggy with a board on it. And the guy that was holding on to him, he could have been a dead hero, you know? Up at the tower, Chapo thinks he solved the mystery of Mammoth. Oh, yeah, the, the, the bald guy with the grey shorts is back at his tower. Oh, thank you. I haven't even any news on that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's back. He's, the, he's back. He's living in mate. OK. In the end, Mammoth wasn't missing. He'd just gone for a walk. But ironically, the false alarm he sparked is what kept lifeguards back late and saved another man from drowning. After doing a massive paddle in the south corner, then having to go full, full speed out for this group, I just gave up. Put my head on the board, I was like, oh, no more. The last hour of duty for lifeguards, 6 to 7 p.m., is infamously known as the witching hour. Just as things were settling down, you know, it was home time, and we were, ha we were over it. We'd had enough, and Harrison was downstairs, and I don't know how, but he's just spotted these two people down south. Over the swells, I could, I could see someone. It was a few surfers. I don't know, and I keep on second-guessing myself. Are there two heads, whip it? Are there two heads off that back and that rip in that corner? You want to get another board? Just grab another board. I don't know how he did it. We're all tired, but he spotted it like a little genius. The distance from the tower to the south corner is 500 metres. Yeah, whip it to boys in the rhino. You're going to just go. Definitely one. Probably might as well both go. There's three of them out there. Yeah, copy me. How's it going? The swimmers have drifted 200 metres offshore. Harrison and Ryan dig deep for the paddle. It was a really long paddle out, and I kept on looking up, and I felt like I wasn't even halfway yet. I had to put my head down, just keep paddling, keep paddling. You're flying down there, you know, they're seeing all these different people drowning, and you've got to make a decision, who do I need to go to first, and it does get the heart rate up. It just seems like people just pick when we're leaving. Oh, okay, lifeguards are leaving now, and now's a good time to drown. Yeah, it is a little bit frustrating, but um, I mean, we're lifeguards, we're not gonna let someone drown, even if we are off the clock. You're sweet. <laughs> if I put him on the board, you're sweet. I got this patient, I did offer him the lift, and I said, oh, you know, we'll get a wave. You wanna jump on and get a wave? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> he was like, yeah, like, let's get a wave, and he was pumped, and I like, so <laughs> he got, got more than he bargained for, I think. As they move into the impact zone, Harrison and Ryan must avoid getting hit by a looming set. A little bit of experience came into play on the way back in and Harrison nailed it like a seasoned veteran and Ryan got smashed like a rookie. No. He's in the barrel. <laughs> in front of all the guys, you want to impress them and all that, and definitely one of the things not to do is um, no stop with a patient, that's for sure. It's all good, just keep going that way, towards that way. With the only available buggy at South Bondi, Whippet spots more people in trouble at the middle of the beach. I looked down and spotted another group of about five people in the other rip. Yeah, two more on this other rip, but... Without backup, lifeguards will be outnumbered. Harrison and Ryan were trying to get them on the radio, and uh, in the end, it was just up to me and Jess. Almost all of the rescue equipment is packed away, so lifeguards must improvise. We just had to run downstairs, take some boards off the racks, and pin it. Go, boss. So I got back to shore. I heard radio chat going non-stop. Ryan, get on the back. 
And I just knew, I said, Ryan, just screen Ryan, get on the buggy, let's just go. We've got to go backpackers. They came from one side, me and Jess were coming, so in the end there was four lifeguards on boards, which is pretty rare, but it was after closing time, so there was, you know, we are all in the one spot. After doing a massive paddle in the south corner, then having to go full full speed out for this group, I just gave up. Put my head on the board. I was like, "Oh, no more." Please, no more swimming. Come back tomorrow. This has just been one heck of a finish to an afternoon. We would have had guaranteed multiple deaths right now. If we'd gone like when we were supposed to have left, they were gone. So, uh, yeah, I think the boys have really earned what they keep today, and I think we're all pretty exhausted, so time for a nice cold beer in the shower, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm proud of the boys. You know, they're back and forth, back and forth, trying to pack all the gear up and in between doing rescues, so it's a part of the job, and it's something they've uh, learned to do, and they do it very well. So just when we think we're all done and dusted, the boys have rescued two, we've just rescued another five. We're that close to a beer in the shower. Jesse's on again. I've seen a guy like 300 metres. Oh, yeah. Further out. And like, obviously I can back myself, but I just, you know, I know how fit Ryan is. I was like, brother, you're coming with me, mate. Let's go. <laughs> In the fading light, Jesse struggles for a visual. Well, yeah, both paddled out and he was so far out. And actually, it was the same bloke I'd rescued about 15 minutes earlier that wanted to get a wave. The man got dumped by Ryan earlier. Now on board with Jesse, he gets a second chance at catching a wave at Bondi. to stand up and absolutely stoked about it and yeah obviously he can go home from Bondi with a smile on his face. When someone's standing on the front of your board it's good for the boys to have a laugh at. Ten after hours rescues in less than ten minutes. Lifeguards finally get to call it a day. Just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting your... Is that a shark alarm? Chris is monitoring the north end when a problem develops further up the beach. Hey, mate, Chris, if you could just come down to two heads just sort of midway out. All of a sudden, the uh, north side really started pulling. You know, the change of tides, it was getting deeper. Guys, I need you to come back to waist step. Chris leaves volunteer lifesavers to manage the situation. Suddenly, more and more people are in trouble. Yeah, it's your attention, swimmers. Oh, I'm making it to go in. So we've got a board coming to help you now. Stay afloat, and if you can, come back to waist step. Board up. Tom is quickly overwhelmed. I had probably three or four on the front of my board, followed by a number of other people out in the water who were able to help. The temptation is to run in, but Chris wisely manages the situation from shore. We had to ask the clubbies to help us out. Just saying there were three clubbies in the board. There would have been 10 boards at least, you know. We had guys, just surf club guys who were training, helping us out. Tom prioritises the worst swimmers, Straight to those guys there, please. Those three there. Over to your right. Eventually, more firepower is needed. Tom's out there, mate. I think he's calling you in. With no board around, I had to grab a lifesaver's board. So I grabbed that and went on out. Yeah, Chris is on a clubby board. 
Tom risks being overwhelmed by panicked swimmers. Can you let go, please? Uh, Chris, Chris, can you take this guy? Lifeguards and volunteer surf club members work side by side to stabilise the situation. Oh, the boys have got it under control down there now. They just all sort of went in at, at once. Just when it feels like the situation is in hand, lifeguards are alerted to a new emergency. Are you putting it? Is that a shark alarm? Yeah, um, I, uh, Jake, I just heard the shark alarm go off. Yeah. Oh, what are you? Oh, you the shark alarm go off. Oh, no, just what are you guys doing down there? In extreme and very rare circumstances, the shark alarm will be used to clear swimmers from the water. We know that as trained lifeguards, that means mass rescue, but the general public think it's a shark. None of them know it's a mass rescue. The alarm has been sounded by volunteer lifesavers. The lifeguards, who have duty of care at Bondi, weren't given prior warning. Before you guys do that, you've got to tell us. Because I know, I know what you're trying to do, but it does, it just causes panic. We've got it under control now, and I thanks to everyone that's involved, but as soon as people start hearing the shark alarm, like, it, look, we've got surfers and everyone paddling in now, so it's just, it, it makes matters worse. There was really no need for it, and half the people thought there was a shark. The result is what matters, and a combined effort by lifeguards and volunteers has saved dozens of lives. With the change of tide, there was enough pull where if you weren't a strong swimmer, you would get pulled off. And once people lose their footing, they start panicking a little bit. And when people really panic, then you can, they can drown in, in bathtubs. So you've got to be right on top of it. 